Hey guys, this is Vampire here once again, bringing to you a game of a long long time ago. So, once again, I forgot everything that transpired in this game, and I decided to do it once again, commentary style. So in Team 1, we have Yellow, Terran, Yin, and uh, I believe he's just gonna open up with a standard depot. Oh, wow, no, he's gonna open up with a 10 gas before depot. That's really interesting. Now let's move on now for Vampire Q. Uh, <coughs> orange T. What am I saying? Orange Zerg over here. And uh, I believe he's gonna open one base. Since he got his Overlord, Gas, Spawning Pool will be coming up right. And uh, so that's it for Vampire Q. And for Purple Terran, we have Blaze coming out with a standard Terran opener. Depot, Barracks, Gas, and then Orbital Command next. Will he go for two Gas? I mean, uh, two Barracks? I don't think so. So there it is, another um, depot to finish the wall off, but actually it isn't really that important anyway since there's a huge gaping hole over here. And uh, it seems that Vampire Q is coming out with six links to attempt to scout the enemy, but let's take a look at the enemy now. We've got Teal coming out with two gas. Uh, cybernetics core off one gate now vampire Q's zerglings are arriving so let's see what he can do scratch a little bit and then realize there's a wall off coming over here realizes a cannon now let's take a look at red two cannons four cannons before gateway now Glenn is really playing defensive over here now he's just saturated his second guess so I assume he's gonna do something really gassy. Now let's take a look at blue. We have two gate. What do I keep saying gate? Um, we have two barracks from um, blue, two gas factory, and two star ports. Interesting. So maybe he's gonna go to port benchy. Not too sure. Now we can see that uh, Teal has actually four gateways and. He's researching Blink from his Twilight Council, so I guess he's going to go for Blink, uh, Mass Blink Stalkers. But as I know, there's not really a lot to talk about, so let's jump back to Team 1. Now we can see Armory, and I guess Thor's. Right, I am Thor Hellion, would be mix, the mix for um, Yellow in. And Vampire Q just said that he's going for Mutas, so he's coming out of his lair. Um, definitely accumulating gas of these four gas geysers and um, yeah he's gonna go for mutas and he's taking down these rocks at the same time now we can see that team 2 actually is pronged for an assault but it's still quite a far way off so I'm gonna jump back to pub now you can see that purple has a nice marine um, bio tank mixture she just secured his uh, expansion now we can see team 1 barreling down ready to strike i assume this top expansion now team one are you aware no it doesn't seem that team one is aware of this assault at all so we see how this plays out and uh for the so there's a scan from team one and uh bang it seems that purple is a little bit more ready and he just takes out all of the bio of uh, blue but now there's all these Cloak the bench is to reckon with. And uh, Cloak the bench is attacking, Bio coming down, and will there be another scan? Yes, there's another scan taking out a second Banshee. The third Banshee pulls back just in time. Now we can see Vampaku is actually coming out with a third base, and um, the rest of the Stalker forces are pulled back and resting here for the moment. Rest their cold steel limbs. Now we can see that all of Team 1 has expanded. Now for Team 2, only Glen is an expansion. And we can see that... Uh, where did that probe go? Hmm, interesting. So as of now, there doesn't seem to be an attempt to expand for Team 2, but... Oh, there it is. Team 2 has started to expand, and we can see that Mutilis are out for Vampire Q. Now is Glen ready? Definitely with all these cannons. He's more than ready to take on any amount of middleist. Any small amount of middleist, I would say. Now you can see that Vampire Q is actually sending some zerglings to scout the expansion now. Suiciding them, gaining intel, avoiding cannon fire as much as possible. 
can see from that individual micro now it's gonna fly into the main base making sure that <coughs> oh my my voice making sure that he stays out of the range of the second cannon while dealing as much economical damage as possible but seeing this pack of stalkers coming here and vampire Q wisely pulls his mutilis out now we can also see there's a carrier force from Glenn two at the moment and definitely we'll be expecting more but as of now it's pretty um, <coughs> peaceful for both teams now we can see wow um, blue is coming out to be done with seven barracks so I can see that it's going to go really heavy on bio but his income is not going to support that but his uh, expansion is coming up so that's going to balance out a little bit now we can see the drone transfer from Vampire IQ that base is up and running but running to these banshees oh man that's not good news losing all these drones what's Vampire going to do now this pack of millers here they are exerting pressure on these banshees because the sea are coming and Vampire is spotting this Madivac is definitely going to try to snipe and yes he does snipe taking one down and bring the other down to about three quarters from middle east splash then we can see a pack of zerlings resting over here scouting and uh, we can see Vampire Q is still trying to poke here causing trying to do as much harassment damage as possible without losing too much and snipe a second medic like he does while losing one middle -isk. now we can see Vampire Q is alerted the presence of the this mass stalkers over here because he can see it from this control of his Zalnaga tower scan from team 2 allows a blink up from Razor taking out this uh, expansion now I'm really glad to see that team 1 has decided that uh, the expansion is dead and not do anything at all but we can see uh, Vampire is sitting on a healthy number of Middleists that's 19 Thor's and Hedden from Yellow and for Purple it's Bio Tank with one Medivac Team 2 pulling out and oh oh purple oh I see he's trying to lure the um, the stalkers of Teal and we can see Vampire Q here is actually hitting on this expansion and sniping down the um, command center of the command but we can see there's a huge pack of stalkers over here mass repairs from SAV but I would say the Millis are going to win and yes the um, command center is taken down and from a healthy 19 of Empire Q is left with 14 so he lost about 5 millilisks in that snipe I would say but I think it's worth it 5 millilisks for to stop uh, a, a revenue source for team I think that's justifiable maybe because this 500 gas lost as well we have to take that into consideration but as of now we can see that yellow is on 3 bases because he's got his high yield perp is now moving into his 3rd base as well and we can see there's a huge force ready to knock on the doors of team 1 uh, scan to confirm the uh, army strength of Vampire Q of team 1 and all these rocks are taken down Blink Stalkers leading the way now I would say that Vampire Q should pull his forces away since he's not going really, to really stand up to this but wow I would say that he's doing quite well taking down like almost half of the Stalkers already but losing all that so means Vampire Q has no choice but to pull the Middle East back and now he's left with 4 sustaining huge loss of that now wow this huge force of bio from blue carriers from red blink stalkers i would say that uh, team one is in dire straits but all these doors that are being repaired by SCVs they are holding out really well taking out the entire force of blue and the couple of the medibags now uh, team has uh, blinked away and as of now peace has returned to the game now, but all these stalkers oh wow oh man Perp you better unload you better unload oh man he loses one full medibag now he's gonna try to unload here I would say that's not a good decision he's still trying to take down the uh, as much uh, interceptors as possible but I would say this is a losing battle 
and yep, you can see this is seven carriers over here. Way too much for this buyer to take. Oh, there's a ping over here. I was saying, um, oh, it must be the uh, the, the Zerg creep problem. But uh, from what I see now, I would say that team one is in not a good shape but we can see that vampire q is still actively trying to scout out for expansion he just returned from here and seeing no expansion he must be feeling a little bit good i would say i don't know but he's now trying to take down these rocks to open an avenue of attack for future engagements and uh, you can see there's a huge force of doors here as well so yeah look maybe team one has decided to strike a counter attack Team 2 is alerted to this presence and Care is moving in from the south. Now the favor is turning to Team 2's side. I would say I would say um, these doors are not gonna stand up to it. Not at all. Flame stalkers moving forward, sniping down doors. Vikings coming to join the fray to try to take down carriers, but I'll say that Team 1, not very good. See carriers remaining, a huge pack of enemy stalkers remaining. Team 2, the tide is in your hands. What is it going to do? What are you going to do? Oh, they decided to retreat and stay passive. I'm not sure, I would say that that's not a very good call. Now, oh, Razor. Offensive GG from Razor, so I'll be expecting Team 2 to win now. But anyway, let's stop talking about Team 2. Let's talk about bases. Team 1, um, two base for Perp, two base for Vampire Q, and uh, one base for Yellow. Three base, oh, actually two base for red and uh, two base, one base for um, blue since this is not saturated, and uh, one base for teal. So in terms of economics, both teams are actually pretty even, but in terms of army size, that's why I will put my favor for uh, team two. This pack of blink stalkers, seven. Oh, six carriers over here compared with Investor Corrupter, Thor, Zerlings, and Viking Bio. So I will say that uh, Team 1 has uh, switched their, their composition to deal with the mass air, especially carriers. You can see a huge force of Zerlings running down here to try to deny this uh, expansion and the liftoff from blue has stopped this invasion of Zerlings actually with all these carries is more than enough if you can see now that Vampaki must be really pissed trying to intercept, trying to disrupt this uh, mining as much as possible taking down one cannon will he take down a second cannon? yes he does, taking down all cannons here but the arrival of the, can the carriers forces the Vampaki back now you can see there's a blink forward from uh, Teal Stalker to try to help with the uh, invasion of Zerlings, but it started to pull back since carriers are more than enough to deal with it. Now you can see another expansion for Teal and Zerlings running up here. Oh, they all decided to decide. And oh, well, actually, Vampire is paying attention to pull these Zerlings back, four remaining. Oh, let's take a look at army composition again. Um, wow, there's a lot of barracks. Doors. Viking corrupted faster. Nine carriers over here. We couple with a small amount of bio from blue and a huge force of stalkers for uh, teal. Um, what we can see, uh, purple actually sniped out one medivac. I would say it's just a huge, huge victory because it seems that blue is doing the worst on army. Now there's a huge pack of. Uh, Stalkers sitting outside and team one is alerted to it and they are moving into position Yellow asking for fungal, vampire you're hiding his uh, fastest. Oh, there goes a fungal trapping a 
pack of uh, stalkers and uh, taking down team one takes down a small pack of stalkers that goes another fungal and team one is going to take down yet another pack of stalkers and another fungal yet another fungal yeah so i'll say that all these stalkers are pretty much dead the water fungals source and uh, bio from pub and well it's going to be too much for team two to handle alone here and it's steam from pub bio now we can see that uh Team 2 has actually got carriers and wild wow, mothership coupled with a small group of uh, bio from blue poised here to intercept but it seems that um, Team 1's intention is actually through this small ramp you can see this uh, expansion is taken out and I would be expecting a huge engagement to come anytime soon anytime soon Zertling is leading the way and I think this calls for a good full screen Mothership. So Team One knows of the existence of uh, the Mothership, and we will see who can prevail. This is a huge force. I would say carriers, Bio, Mothership, Wow, and against the uh, large blue. <laughs> oh, this uh, fungus looks huge, and we can see that Team One is actually taking down all these carriers with really rather quickly and steam from a uh, purple to join the fray. And we can see that Team One is actually. Uh, coming out on top, seems that this investors, force, Vikings, and Corruptors are just way too much for the air centric force of Red and Teal. And now we can see they have all left the game. And so here it is offensive GG turning into a loss. Now, this Vampire Q once again, hope you guys enjoyed this cast. And uh, actually, I've casted this like directly 10 minutes ago and then i realized that i forgot to turn the sound down so i have got to do this again so maybe i sound a little bit rehearsed so i apologize for that but if you enjoyed this cast subscribe drop a comments keep watching and yeah vampire q out thanks for watching